Alright boys and girls, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about piston ring end gap and why this is important. So, when you get a brand new set of rings in your package like this, they do not come gapped. Okay? We'll put one I haven't even been working on yet in there. And the gap is the area between each side of the ring. And when this closes up, you're supposed to have a specific amount of gap in between the rings. If you don't have enough gap, they'll touch and they'll get hot. And when it gets hot, it will lift the land on the ring. So it can actually break a chunk of this piston off, especially in forced induced cars and stuff like that. You'll hear about people lifting a ring land. What they mean is one of these landings where the ring goes, right in here or there, things going here and there will actually crack and break up and I'll try and insert a picture maybe right here of something that's actually happened like that to a friend of mine because it was a stock motor with no who knows if it was ever checked for ring gap or not anyway. so what we're going to do is I want to show you guys what a stock one is take a piston ring and I'm going to put it down in the bore now they sell fancy tools to square them up. You can use your piston. You got to get it down there a good amount. Um, some people like halves. I like more like at the top dead center where the actual compression is. But I still put it down a decent amount. So I'm going to go to the oil control ring. There you go. It should still be below where the compression ring rides. There we go. And I'm going to measure and see how much we actually have here. Because this one has not been um, played with yet. So it's going to be pretty low. Let's go with 10 thousandths. Now every car and every bore diameter is going to be a different setup. So 10 thousandths fits. I'd have to look up what the stock specs are. This is not going to be stock. Let's go to 15. I don't think 15 will fit. And 15 just barely fits. So that's 15 thousandths ring gap, which would probably be fine for a stalker, but this car is going to be turbocharged, and I have to have a 20 thousandths feeler gauge, so three, 22 actually, is what we're going to end up going with. It's a little much, but as you can see, the gauge doesn't go through, alright, so, what you're going to have to do is they sell little fancy tools with a little grinding wheel and stuff on it or you can do it the old-fashioned way little file All right. and when you're filing the theory of thought here is you want to actually be doing it this way towards the inside so that there will not be a burr kicking on the outside edge and you're going to want to knock down all the edges so that there is no burr to catch on the ring groove or the other edge of the ring there. So, I want to do a little more on this one because I know I need to. And you just pull it back, try and keep it square. You know, you don't want it getting all crooked. You want these as square as possible. That's where the tools are nice. This one was pretty close because I had already worked on it. I'm going to try and get it in there. The edges off. You just try and get the bar off, that's all you're trying to do. And you can, there is orientation of these if there's a, it will say top on it or a dot, and some of them have dots, some of them have words. And it's just on the brand. Be careful, you don't want to break one. Put it back down. I always choose this to always make sure it goes back in the same spot in the bore. Right. You could leave the pin hanging out and make it that way if you wanted to. So we're looking for 22 thousandths on this application. Get my healer gauge. No. Not there yet. But 20 fits. So I'm really close. Now I've noticed that when you uh, get it to fit one way. Nope. So 
down it comes. And I always keep grinding on the side of ground on, just a little preference thing. Probably doesn't ground me much. They don't have to have a polish or anything on the ends. If you look at the ends of the rings, they're actually kind of rough. They have a coating on them, usually. anything special for this. Hmm. It's just a trial and error thing. I have to go some more. So anyways, boys and girls, I'm not going to bore you with any more of that. But that's what we're doing today, was we're uh, gapping a full set of rings. You need to make sure that you check the top gap, second gap, and you need to make sure you have minimum clearance for the oil expander ring. The oil expander has these nice, usually the aftermarket ones come with this little grid like that, but it has these two rings. They look like small compression rings. They're really thin. And you're going to need to put these in there and check the gap. Usually the um, manufacturer of the piston will have a minimum gap and it's usually, I think, pretty much all of them are like 15 thousandths or something like that. You, like I say, per application, you got to check that. Um, since if this was a bigger bore, it's a, it's a multiplier times the bore. So there is no set thing for a Volkswagen. You know, you don't just set all of them to 15 or 20 thousandths. It all depends on the application. If you're running turbocharger, nitrous, carbureted, race circle track, drag racing, endurance racing, what are you trying to do? Because each one of those motors is going to experience a different load and the, the amount of power and load will determine how hot the ring gets. So this is going to have force induction on it, so it needs a bigger gap because these rings will get hotter and they will grow more and they can potentially touch, which means it can break a piston. So next thing too to know about is piston materials. Um, generally, the cast pistons are going to want more ring gap than a forged piston. So, something you need to look into. Um, the Hypertech Keith Black pistons have a lot larger clearance than like a Weisco's uh, forged piston. So, things you need to find out. Look on the internet. Five seconds will get you a chart. You know, just type in ring gap and you'll find it out. Anyways, boys and girls. Stay safe out there, get out in there in the garage, get your projects going. I'm trying to do the best I can because uh, two years from now you guys won't remember it, but we're having that virus thing and the kids are all home, which is uh, <laughs> taking a more of a toll on my Volkswagen time than I thought it would. So I'll see you guys later. Get out there and get in the garage, hit that uh, play button, watch some of the other Volkswagen guys and other car guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll see you guys later.